News alert. We are just one hour away from what House Republicans are billing as the biggest hearing yet in their Biden family investigation. The House Oversight Committee is set to hear testimony from two IRS whistleblowers who both allege that the DOJ's Hunter Biden investigation was grossly mishandled and riddled with political roadblocks. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host, Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall, former GOP gubernatorial candidate and host of the Tudor Dixon podcast, Tudor Dixon, and Fox News contributor Douglas Murray. Oversight Chairman James Comer is calling them his A-team. We know the identity of one of the whistleblowers set to testify today. His name is IRS Supervisory Agent Gary Shapley. The other thus far has only been identified as Whistleblower X. His identity, though, will be publicly revealed next hour and for the first time. At the hearing, Mr. X has been with, we've learned that he's been with the IRS for 13 years, and he describes himself as a whistleblower who's been compelled to disclose the truth. Now IRS agent Shapley's attorney is speaking out before the hearing and vouching for the credibility of these two men coming forward. In one hour, we will learn who Mr. X is, his identity. Leslie, you know, I, I go to incentive here. This individual has zero incentive to do what he is doing. He had to find an attorney pro bono. He says, I don't live in Washington, D.C. Uh, he lives in Ohio or somewhere in the southeast, I think he said. He has to pay out of pocket each and every time he wow. flies to D.C. And he says, I have not accepted a single payment from anyone for being a whistleblower. Wow. And he's afraid of losing his job. What incentive does this guy have um, other than just telling the truth? He doesn't have incentive, but one of the problems that I have is he wasn't in the room on October 22nd. And if you're going to corroborate, if you're saying this is our A team, we have two people here, and, and you have Shapley saying one thing, and then you have Mr. X at the moment, until he is revealed, saying, you know, I concur and, you know, I back up everything that he has said, but you weren't in the room on October 22nd. Gary Shapley's supervisor signed off on what was in that room in an email. Uh, but, so you have a supervisor signing off saying, yes, correct. Gary Mr. Shapley. X is stating things and backing up Mr. Shapley with regard to a meeting he wasn't present on he, he, October he talks 22nd about going to the US and saying that Mr. Weiss said certain things. Mr. It, right now it comes down to Shapley Leslie, versus we Weiss just laid out, and who, whose We just word laid out the assistant word. U.S. attorney. We laid out, we can put it back on the wall if you want to, the assistant U.S. attorney who stymied Mr. X every step of the way. That is exactly what Gary Shapley was alleging. Just because he wasn't in one meeting doesn't mean it doesn't back up the entirety of the styming storyline. I'm not saying it doesn't back up the entirety, but it's a key part of this testimony. A key part of this testimony is what was said or wasn't said by Mr. Weiss, as Mr. Shapley alleges. And Mr. X was not in the room, so he really can't say one way or the other who is right. It comes down to he said, he said, in that room on October 22nd, largely. But it's not from just where he I said, stand. he said, it's so, he said, they said, because there was somebody else who signed off on Gary Shapley's notes from the meeting. So it's a they said versus a he but said. Mr. Singular X is not two. one of those they and Can't. was not present in the room in the meeting. But he backs up. Yesterday, the president sat down with Israeli President Isaac Herzog in the Oval Office. It was an important meeting. It was a make good of sorts after the president called his nation extremists. He had apologized. He also called Benjamin Netanyahu. I mean, clean up on aisle seven. But during that Oval Office moment, our 80-year-old leader, and God bless the octogenarian, was spotted using note cards to get through the meeting, a meeting that was really just a hello welcome. He struggled to pronounce the names of several major cities in the Middle East, and then some of it was just incoherent. We brought Israelis and Palestinians together at a political level, and they... Uh... And uh, at the uh, and Aqua and the old Shrine. Yes. You know, Leslie, you and I have talked um, brass tacks about your party, about both parties. What is your take? Answer Kaylee's question there. Well, first of all, I've seen presidents, Democrat, Republican, whether they're near 80 or whether they're closer to 50, um, that have made mistakes, make mistakes as to where they're going, where they are, uh, you know, names of vegetables, names of cities or towns, and I've seen that. You know, as not just a Democrat, but as a voter, um, I really don't look at whether they're using note cards or teleprompters, uh, whether they, you know, miss, misspeak, because I certainly am not a perfect human being and not in a position to judge you anybody else. You do hours else. of radio a day? But, You're amazing. Stop. Oh, thank, thank you. Also thank not you. the president. Thank it, you. Also not level. the president. Guys, I inhaled and have way too many skeletons in my closet. <laughs> I will never be president. I can guarantee you that. But, but you know, for, for me, what, what, what I care about is policy, and I care about 
what has been done and what I heard Herzog say before and after President Biden spoke was awesome to me as an American with regard to Israel as an ally, and it remains to be one of our strongest allies, and we heard that from Herzog's lips himself. Well, country music superstar Jason Aldean is now hitting back at critics after he was accused of promoting racism and lynching in a recent song. The song is titled Try That in a Small Town, and it was first released back in May. The track centers around rising crime uh, in American cities, and Aldean argues that it wouldn't be tolerated in small-town America. The music video was just released late last week and features video clips from the BLM riots back in 2020. Well, critics online and in the media were quick to accuse Aldean of promoting racial violence. Some went as far as to say the song glorified lynchings. And CMT quickly pulled the music video from its rotation. Now Aldean is responding, saying in a statement, quote, in the past 24 hours, I have been accused of releasing a pro-lynching song, a song that has been out since May and was subject to the comparison that I direct quote, was not too pleased with the nationwide BLM protest. These references are not only meritless, but dangerous. There's not a single lyric in the song that references race or points to it. And there isn't a single video clip that isn't real news footage. And while I can try and respect others to have their own interpretation of a song with music, this one goes too far. He went on to say, try that in a small town for me refers to the feeling of a community that I had growing up where we took care of our neighbors regardless of differences of background or belief because they were our neighbors and that was above any differences. Leslie. Thanks, Kaylee. Um, first of all, uh, I don't kill me. Everybody's going to get mad at me on Twitter. I am not a country uh -oh. music fan. I didn't know who this guy was. On, sorry, Leslie. sorry, sorry. The best. But I do like the song God Bless Texas. Uh, when I lived there, I played all the time. I like it. Um, I wasn't understanding, okay, so I did some research, and the problem that the African-American community, even many, one of my best friends, African-American, who loves country music, and I called her and I said, what is up with it? Mm -hmm. And she said, in the video, the courthouse that he stands in front of in that town was used for lynchings. And so a lot of people felt offended or felt in bad taste, one. Two, CMT isn't going to pull anything rap because it doesn't go by or hip-hop because it doesn't, you know, it isn't their world. And the Dixie Chicks... They were canceled, not just by CMT, but by the entire country music uh, corporations, the people, because they, they spoke out against George but Bush. So this isn't the first time this has happened. All right, so we know that the American military is struggling with recruitment. Fox News Digital spoke with Aiden Gilbert, the teenage son of a Marine veteran. Now Aiden does not want to follow in his father's footsteps, and he blames... Democrats, the left, for eroding his patriotism. Let's watch uh, together. No, we agree. I'm yeah. going to go with what the Army said, though. The Army said that they have had uh, a decline since 2013 till now, last year and this year, where they're worse. And they said there are barriers getting applicants into the ranks, but biggest problem for them is prime recruiting age recruits just aren't qualified to be recruits. So they're actually turning some people away as well. And China... Come on, Kaylee, they're communists. They're forced to be in the military. There are a lot of factors, but, <laughs> but, no, but we're we missing, we are missing goals by 25%, Leslie. Yeah. That's not sustainable. But it's not because of one kid's opinion, which he has the First Amendment constitutional right to do and to say. It's not one kid's opinion There's in a vid of a video. Reflects, it's not just one person. I, do, I don't, not but I, do, I, don't, I don't think it has to do with woke or anything like that. I think that... Our youth has just changed. Well, they want to work in front good. of their computer. They don't want to strap on of, gear. A lot of that the, the new Barbie movie is being released this week, and one critic is slamming it for building up women while tearing down men. It seems to be a trend. The Daily Mail, Sarah Vine, writing, quote, it's a deeply anti-man movie, an extension of all that TikTok feminism that paints any form of masculinity other than the most anodyne as toxic and predatory and frames women's liberation not as a movement based on achieving equality between the sexes, but as a cultural revenge vehicle designed to write men out of the story altogether. Oof. Every male character is either an idiot, a bigot, or a sad, rather pathetic loser. If the roles were reversed and a male director made a film about how all women were hysterical, neurotic, gold-digging witches, it would be denounced quite rightly as deeply offensive and sexist. Bingo. <laughs> Leslie, I am all for empowering women movies. Like, I loved Wonder Woman. I think it was Gail Gugo. Like, fantastic movie. But, like, why must you marginalize men? I haven't seen this, but if that is true, why must you do it? 
I haven't seen it, but I think it comes down to living 20 minutes from Hollywood money. They make money. Ooh. Barbie's doing fine. Barbie, you know, reinvents herself every few years. She's doing fine. This is a movie, and uh, movie stars are going to make money, and it's Ryan Gosling who is building your aquarium. <laughs> I know. He, no, but I, I think, my house I mean, and build even, an aquarium any day. Even when I was a kid and I played with Barbie and Ken, Ken, Ken wasn't really manly. You don't need <laughs> to put what? men down to lift yourself you up as a woman. But... I would like, as a feminist, women to empower each other and not That's rip important. each other down. Because if you want to read my Twitter page after this hour, <laughs> you will see women tearing a oh, woman yeah. down. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think, you know, it's a movie. My daughter and her girlfriends want to go see it. I'm not going to go see it. I haven't seen it. You're not going to go money. see it? No. See, this, we are just moments away from what House Republicans have been talking about and calling their biggest hearing yet in their Biden family investigation, two IRS whistleblowers expected to take the stand before the House Oversight Committee and explain exactly how the Hunter Biden tax investigation was marred by political roadblocks. We're going to do a quick lightning round now. Yeah, how deep it goes and why he got off with, like, almost nothing compared to the felonies that attorneys are saying this would have been had it been a regular investigation. Leslie. I'm interested in seeing the Q&A, more the A, the answers, the, you know, the, than the questions that uh, come out. And, uh, you know, you said, I, I'm going to speak, uh, you said during the break, Cirque du Soleil, one thing I don't like as a taxpayer is I do think that we see a lot of circus-like yeah. things. Democrats do it, Republicans do it, you know, play out in, in, in the public eye and, you know, certainly in the media. We watch it, yep. we listen to it, but I really don't think it changes. Yeah, I don't